utilization in general utilization shows the maximum hours we can expect to use the work center many things can affect the hours the equipment can be used including machine problems absent workers material problems and other types of delays therefore utilization is defined as utilization is equal to hours work divided by available hours multiply by 100 percent or from a product perspective utilization minus actual output divided by design capacity into 100 percent next efficiency efficiency essentially measures the actual output of a refined area as compared to the standard rate of production based on the same number of hours the standard rate of production is of course based on the time standards given the above discussion it should be easy to see how many operations can obtain an efficiency well in excess of 100 percent efficiency is equal to standard hours produced divided by hours worked multiply 100 percent or from a product perspective efficiency is equal to actual production rate divided by standard production rate multiply 100 percent next rated capacity defined as the product of available time efficiency and utilization so we can define rated capacity rated capacity is equal to available time multiply efficiency multiply utilization and the last one demonstrated capacity as implied by the name demonstrated capacity it is the actual capacity output as shown by the production records next topic or the last topic of this chapter general approach to capacity management as indicated on figure 7.1 the first figure of this chapter capacity management is a critical activity in managing an operation the best production plans and schedules in the world are of virtually no use without the right amount of the right capacity with which to execute those plans. The key to capacity management is therefore to be constantly comparing the capacity available with the capacity required to meet the needs of the customers as defined by the MPS and the MRP output. If a mismatch exists, the product Product manager will analyze the options and make the most cost effective decisions possible to address the mismatch. Much as in the discussion in the chapter on sales and operations planning as an OP, the manager can elect to change the amount and or timing of the capacity, can change the load or both. Given that the time frames are much shorter when dealing with the MPS as compared to the SNOP, many of the options dealing with load are not available. Much of the load in the short term represents first farm customer orders as opposed to the forecasts found in the SNOP. Since many of these customers have already been promised delivery, it becomes difficult to alter those delivery promises. The major issue then focuses on using relatively short-term solutions to manage the amount and type of capacity available to process the load. As with the SNOP, there are several options available, including overtime, subcontracting, hiring or firing workers, temporary workers, shift workers from one work center to another, assumes workforce flexibility, Use alternative routings for the work. In some cases, even if the alternative routing is not as cost effective. In fact, many operations discover that if they have one operation that is more efficient than the alternatives, all jobs will be selected to use this more efficient operation, thereby overloading it. It must be recognized that using a less efficient operation may be highly preferable to missing a customer order due date merely to make it in a more efficient manner the good news with the discussion is however that if a good job was done with forecasting and using that forecast for effective sales and operations planning the correct resources should largely be in place more specifically the entire process of capacity planning is detailed in the chapter should really be the little more than fine-tuning of the required capacity 
if this is not the case it is the Zenobian forecasting approaches that should be should first be examined rather than the more detailed capacity planning approaches discussed in this chapter so here are some key terms of this chapter capacity rough cut capacity planning resource profiles input or output control rated capacity load capacity wheels capacity requirements planning crp utilization capacity planning routing efficiency and demonstrated capacity and there is the summary of this particular chapter this chapter discusses the importance of capacity for without adequate capacity of the correct type there will be little chance of implementing the best of production plans several approaches are discussed from the roughest of the rough cut methods to the most detailed crp in addition the control of capacity while the plan